question I am frequently asked is if I like anime. To which my obvious reply is, of course not, get out of my face you snot nosed dweeb. But anime has become so present in modern media that I can't help but find a lot of Japanese animated series and films enjoyable and entertaining. Once I answer this question, the follow up question is almost always, oh, you like anime? What anime series do you like? Do you like Dragon Ball Z? Naruto? Sailor Moon? Jojo's Bizarre Adventure? To which I almost always reply, What did I tell you about getting out of my face? If you don't leave within the next 30 seconds, I'm gonna blend you into a smoothie, you repulsive reprobate! But no, other than watching Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball when I was really young, and really appreciating the representation I got in the form of eight people, I really haven't kept up with many mainstream anime series, nor am I really invested in the stories of them. Not that you're wrong for enjoying them, you can do as many of those ridiculous Naruto hand gestures as you want, and you won't receive any criticism from me. By the way, here's the one to turn into a gorilla. Of all the anime I've watched, however, I think the ones I've enjoyed the most were films. Not that I don't enjoy many anime series, I'm a big fan of Ghost in the Shell, Cowboy Bebop, and many others, but in some series, it seems that the creators lose sense of what they were going for, and meander around, filling in the time with things that may go somewhere, sometime, and others that aren't really complete. That's why I really enjoy films and OVAs, because they're self-contained, and they have a finality to them. Not that I don't enjoy the long form of a series and the elements thereof, but on the whole, I think I'd like films more. The problem with that is that films and OVAs don't really reach mainstream attention. And when I respond to the question of what animes I watch, and I say a film or an OVA, I often get responses like, Huh? What's that? What the heck is a perfect blue? To which my response is, That's it, you're friggin' dead, kiddo. That's why I'd like to make you aware of an OVA that I really enjoy, and that not many people have heard of. Riding Bean. Writing Bean is a 1989 OVA based on the manga of the same name by Kenichi Sonoda. The plot revolves around the courier for hire in Chicago, Bean Bandit, also known as The Road Buster, who makes deliveries and gives rides to some less than scrupulous individuals. However, he gets framed for kidnapping the daughter of the president of this huge conglomerate, and along with his partner Rally, he must fight off police and criminals alike to clear his name. That's right, before big buff British man driving around, or big handsome Canadian man moping to synthwave, there was Riding Bean. But before I break down what I enjoyed so much about Riding Bean and what I didn't enjoy as much, I'd like to introduce you to a new segment of my show called Gorilla Gastronomics. During this segment, I'll be trying out various foods and drinks and giving you my opinion on them. For this week, we are talking about WBC Chicago-style root beer. So, let's give this a sip. Mmm, that's quite nice. Let me take another. Ah, refreshing. This is really good stuff. I highly recommend it. Now, back to the review. What I liked... I love the aesthetic of Riding Bean. Sonata is known for really pioneering the styles of early 90s anime, and it really shows in his work. You can see this in Riding Bean, Gunsmith Cats, Bubblegum Crisis, and so on. Additionally, the humor and action I find were really well balanced, and sometimes they blend well together, like how Bean can take a bullet to the head and still survive, or look at what he's eating for breakfast. Finally, the music in this OVA is fantastic. It's jazzy, it's fast-paced, it can be a little subdued at times, but it fits very well within the setting of this anime. 
the Chicagoland area, especially considering that the musician behind the music, David Garfield, is a Chicago native. All of these elements, the music, the style, the humor and action, blend together to make a very nice presentation. One that doesn't rely on superpowers or, or magical girl transformations to really get you invested in it. However, there were some things that I didn't like so much about writing Bean. What I didn't like. Okay, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Hey man, listen here. You, I told you many times before, you're not welcome here. Now, go away. Go. Get. Anyway, with that out of the way... There's a lot of debate as to the question of subs versus dubs. Personally, I like dubs because it can kind of strain my eyes to look at text at the bottom of the screen and over and over again. With that being said, a lot of dubs suffer from bad direction or poor execution or both. Writing mean is not exempt from this, unfortunately. And while the dub doesn't bother me too much, it can be a little grating for others. Rally your wake-up technique leaves a lot to be desired. Are you going to fry my eyeball for breakfast? All right, I'll throw it, okay? <laughs> I like a sensible girl. <laughs> Why don't we just charge in there, Inspector? With this many men, he won't last a second against us! Additionally, this anime is supposed to take place in Chicago, but this doesn't really look too much like Chicago. I've lived in Chicago almost all my life. Lincoln Park Zoo. The gorillas there are really chill. And I can tell you that this doesn't capture the city well. And other than stating a few names of streets like Dearborn and Michigan Avenue, there really isn't too much that really signifies that this is Chicago in any true sense. Luckily, they'd accomplish this later in the series of Gunsmith Cats, but it's kind of a little disappointing to see a city so distinct as Chicago go a little underrepresented. And finally, and there's going to be a content warning here, I'm going to be talking about an element within this OVA that deals with topics of abuse, so if that's something you don't want to hear or something that really concerns you, just skip ahead to this time. You don't need that in your life. You have enough on your plate with all that's going on right now. Just, just skip ahead. It's okay. You're not going to miss much, okay? Okay, are they gone? Okay, now let's continue. So, I really didn't like how they handled the characters of Carrie and Semmer. Semmer and Carrie are in an abusive relationship, with Semmer using Carrie to do her dirty deeds while showering her in love and attention, and then also hitting and slapping her when she doesn't do what she wants. Media can address stories of abuse like this well, but this is not one of them. Their relationship really only serves to vilify Semmer, and when Semmer is bested at the end, Carrie is upset, threatens to kill Bean Bandit, to which he replies basically, Ha ha, you thought, now get in the car, I'll drive you out of here. And then all is forgiven, and they drive off into the sun. Now, I know this is an OVA, and there's only so much they can accomplish, but this kind of one-dimensionality is not good. It's a bad representation at the most, and really dangerous and minimalizing the emotions and the repercussions of abuse at worst. I didn't like it. All in all, Writing Bean is a cool, stylized OVA, and I find that it stands out against much of the magical and superpower enemies of our day because it's still grounded in reality, well, somewhat. While I like the style, music, and basic plot, I feel it needs to be expounded upon. I want to know more about these characters in the world of the Roadbuster, as well as a better handling of some of the more difficult subject matter presented in this world. Maybe a better dub next time, too. But if you're looking for a short OVA that kind of captures the style of the early 90s, I definitely recommend Riding Bean. Now, I normally drive off into the sunset at this point, but gorillas can't drive, so I'll just fade out of existence. Thanks for watching.